Hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? And welcome to uh, Mad About Hoovers, the channel that is mad about hoovers. Or in this case, not so mad about vaxes. Because today we're going to be talking about uh, a machine that I mentioned when I was doing my Dyson reviews. I might have been doing another review, but I talked about this particular machine and I said, um, when I was talking about build quality of machines, and I had uh, I had one f three years ago, and it put me off buying a low energy vacuum for a long time afterwards. And this was the machine. So today we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking about this. It is a what's it called now? It's a, a Vax Energize Pulse Pet, right? Now I'm going to give a shout out to Vacuum Tests again. I got your little message um, on your comment there, so thanks very much for that. I'm glad you're liking your Dyson DC40 Mark One, and you're finding it nicer than your Shark. I think it does sound better than the Shark, to be honest. But this one, really, you should recognise this because it's very, very similar to your um, Vax Impulse, which you bought, and you had to make a load of modifications to. But this is essentially the same machine. It's just a different colour. And uh, this machine has got pretty much all the flaws and the faults that you found with yours. So, I hope we've got about nine hours to go through all the faults with this machine, because it uh, might take a while. I would label this machine, and uh, this is going to go in my Hall of Fame, this is. I never took this back to Argos, because I thought, I'm going to keep this as an example of how not to make a vacuum cleaner. This, I'm going to give my crown to as my worst machine ever. Now that's quite an accolade to have really, because I've had quite a few machines. I've got over 50 machines in the house at the moment. And this, out of all the machines I've ever had, I've been the most disappointed with. Now, it's not specific to do with the price that it costs. It is the designers at Vax. How on earth could they have got away with designing and selling something like this to the public? Because as far as I'm concerned, this machine is not fit for purpose. It is absolutely shocking. Now, at the present time, in the Argos catalogue, because I get a lot of my, my machines from Argos because they have a fair few offers on, Vax appear to have stopped selling a lot of these cheapo um, bagless uh, uprights. Uh, the last time I was looking, they actually hadn't got that many of them for under £100. Apart from the one with the fold down handle on the back, which my mother's got, and she quite likes it. It's the one with the paper cone filter in it. It's the very, very cheap one. But all these, uh, these models that seem to be like this, they seem to be being replaced now with the, the old Vax Mac Air design, which is using the multi cyclonic, and they're selling those for a cheaper price. So my guess is they've had so many people complaining about these that they just say, we can't make them anymore because they just don't work. I don't know, I don't know the reason why the Vax have stopped selling these type of cleaners like this. Uh, I think there's one called the Power, something or other performance one, which uses a similar cyclone setup to this, but I think it's mounted on its side. But I mean, they're over £100. So, it just seems that maybe Vax are beginning to learn their lesson, in that you can't keep getting away with selling rubbish to the public, because they're not going to buy from you again, they're going to give you bad reviews, and the amount of bad reviews I've seen about these when they were being sold, I said, I knew it, that people would complain about these, and they did. They complained rather a lot. So, what I'm going to do is I will get the camera down and we will, uh, we will look at this awful machine, and uh, I'll show you its features, and I will explain the reasons why I think that this machine is probably about the worst machine I've ever bought. And we're talking about brand new machines here. We're not talking about old second-hand ones. We're talking about new. We're talking about you've gone in the store, you bought the machine, you've got it back, you've boxed it in, and then straight away, as soon as you're using it, there's problems. And tomorrow, or the next video I'll be doing, I'll be doing one of the Vax Mac Air Reach, which I hadn't done before. I don't think the total home, but that was a long time ago. But I've got one out the loft today, the purple one. And that had some problems, and I'm going to be bringing that down for a, a review shortly. And we'll go through that, because that was actually quite a popular machine. And they make, they're still making very similar to that now. So, 
we'll, we'll, we'll have another shout out as well for Roger while I'm here because uh, Roger's in the process of moving his mother's house at the moment so he's, he's sort of very uh, up in the air with all his vacuum cleaners and uh, I don't know whether Roger watches my channel or my videos I, I don't know whether he does or not I, um, but I'm wishing Roger the best of luck and I uh, hope all goes well he inspires all of us to make these videos we all aspire to be like Roger, don't we? To try and do things the way that Roger does it. I mean, heck, I even used the term bag of filth, didn't I, a little while ago with my um, demonstrations. And that was something that he christened, was the term bag of filth. You know, when we put the mess down on the carpet from the old vacuum cleaner bags, he talks about the line of shame. And we all use that term now, don't we? Where the, where the upright goes along in the belt, leaves a mark on the carpet where it doesn't pick up. So yeah, Roger, all the best to you. Hope it goes well. And we look forward to seeing you back on the channel soon. And uh, so, a shout-out as well. I know I'm doing the shout-outs here, but uh, everyone else seems to do it. So I will say, uh, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, and how are you today? To Sam Watson, or Becco1987. Great channel. Love you. Lo love, you love your content. Um, hope you managed to fix Dorian's Hoover Jr. in the end. Uh, he really did send you an absolute pile of crap, didn't he? But there we go. I think Dorian knows how to do him himself now. So, And we'll say hello to Dorian as well. We'll say hello to Hoover Lux. Um, yours is great. Your channel's great too. So, the Vax Impulse. Or in this case, Energized Pulse Pet. Here it is. This machine was one of the very earliest machines that was sold in Argos after the first EU regulations came in in August 2014. This I bought from Argos on the 1st of August 2014 when they had the, uh, the new uh, regulations came in and uh, I think this appeared in the catalogue a little bit before but they hadn't got any in stock or showed it as being out of stock. But on the 1st of August they showed it as being in stock. So I thought, right, I want one of these machines because I want to see how they perform. But we're going to buy a cheapo first, just to see what the pickup's like. Because the separation on there, I've had vaxes which use that type of separation before. It's only a single cyclone, but those aren't actually too bad. Because it has a foam filter in the lid. And uh, it has a, a sort of a, a centre separator in the middle that flings the dirt out the top, out of the top there and then it drops down into the bottom of the bin. And I didn't think they were too bad. They're doing dirty, the filters, but they're, they're not as bad to clean as the, uh, the pleated filter type. Which I can't believe, to be honest, that they still sell, but they still do. So, I bought this machine. I mean, I'm, I'm just looking here for a start, and already you can see the labels actually started peeling off the front here, look. Vax quality for you there. So they don't even use glue strong enough to stick their own name on, on the machine. I only noticed that when I brought that down today. I thought, well, that's really good, isn't it? That's not even that's not even sticking on properly and coming off. So the machine has got a very eco-friendly motor in because this was when they they brought the first part of the regulations out that said that the maximum wattage was allowed to be sixteen hundred watts, but in twenty seventeen it was reduced to nine hundred. So what Vax thought is, oh well, we might as well make all our machines under nine hundred watts now. And then we haven't got to worry about it for 2017. Which was okay, I suppose, what they, what they did. And uh, we'll just have a look at the ratings label and confirm that wattage. Oh, it's actually a 750 watt. I do apologise, my mistake. I thought it was 700 watts, but it's 750. Um, I'm just having a look there. It was... Um, Looks like 1614 was the production date. So that was probably week 16 of 2014 when that was made. Then the 1614, I think, is the date. You can get the date on manufacture. It is, um, it's there, 1614. And then the 01676, I think that's the actual um, the model itself, the, 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 the number of the production number. But yeah, it's made in China, as all Vaxes are and it really shows on this machine. It was a cheap machine and you get what you pay for with this. But in fact, I wouldn't have even, if I'd have known what this was like, I wouldn't have even paid five pounds for it. I wouldn't have even bought it. Because quite honestly, the, uh, the way it's been designed and the construction of it is appalling. It is. 
It's almost as if they've had a five-year-old child designed it and never tested the design and they just cobbled it together, presumably so they could get something out for these new regulations. And they didn't test the product, did they? Properly. And this was the case with the Vaxair Revolve as well. When that came out, they didn't test it properly. And all that happened was the exhaust filter constantly clogged up and the cyclone didn't work and the pre-motor filter just got clogged up straight away as soon as you used it. Because Sam Watson showed us what happened to his and other people have showed us what happened. They were hopeless and in the end Vax had to send them a completely different model. But you know, I don't understand why they don't test the products properly. But anyway, the first of the problems with this machine became apparent straight away. There's the brush roll. Now on the, on the face of it, it actually looks like a really good brush roll. Um, I can't really say that that's a bad brush roll. It's got nice bristles that go all the way across. Uh, it's the helical design. So I mean the brush roll looks absolutely fine. But the problem with it was, it wouldn't push across the carpet in certain directions. Now, when you've got a cut pile carpet such as this, the pile will go in one direction when it's been worn in a little bit. So this will be the smooth way and then that's going against the pile and when you push your hand you can see it, you can bring the pile up like this and you can see that. Now when you're pushing this machine against the direction of the pile it got bogged down, it got stuck into the pile and initially I thought that that was down to this part here on the front being a little bit uh, sticky out because that's what it is, it's a little bit, uh, it sticks a little bit proud but what that, what that actually looks like is um, it's something to direct the dirt to one side or the other side instead of going underneath this part where the line of shame would be. So it actually wasn't that that was causing it to get bogged down on the carpet. What was causing it to get bogged down on the carpet was this rear edge here. It was very, very, very sharp and you could almost cut your finger on it because it was so sharp that point along the back of here. So what I had to do, I don't know whether you can notice that there, but I've had to get a file on here and file this down. Literally file that plastic down to get rid of the sharp edge on here. And you can actually see the way it's actually not going straight now because I've had to file that much plastic off it. And now it, it does run across carpet a little bit better than what it did. But initially it was a nightmare and I thought, what, how on earth am I going to push this properly? So if they, if they produced the machine with that design and sold it to everybody like that, it's no wonder they were getting complaints that people couldn't push it. You might, you might have been alright on a very, very short pile carpet or even on hard floor. But on this type of carpet, where you've got a pile, that's a disaster. And it was basically poor design, again, and poor quality control. Is that they knew that this would have to be pushed over a carpet, but they left that rear edge sharp and so it would get bogged down into the pile. Now, the next, the next issue concerns these wheels. They're absolutely tiny, they don't support the weight of the machine properly, and all they do is get bogged down into the pile of the carpet. Okay? These pile adjustment wheels are too small, especially when you're going to use them on a, on a cut pile carpet like this. And the other issue was is that the height control knob doesn't raise the machine off the floor sufficiently when the machine is stood in the upright mode and you're using the hose. So what's happening basically is that as you're tugging on the hose and using it, this brush roll here, because it doesn't turn off, because it's a single motor, is constantly rubbing against the carpet when it should be standing way clear of the carpet. And I can show that when I stand it up. Now if you look at the, the front here, you can see that that is very, 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 I mean that's stood in the upright lock position now. But that there is very, very, very nearly touching the carpet there. And when you were using the hose on the back and tugging at it, it moves slightly. And you can hear it then contacting the carpet as if it's trying to vacuum. Because it's not lifting as it should do like that high enough away from the carpet. Because of those wheels being too small and just sinking into the carpet. So again, that's a bad design right from the start. That's not down to quality control, that's down to design. They designed it with wheels that were too small and that didn't have enough clearance from the carpet when you were going to use the tool. Now, if, what if it had been a deeper pile carpet than this? Because this is a very short pile. It's just going to damage people's carpets when they use the hose. So, 
That was a major problem. Now we're going to get onto the hose itself. I mean, what on earth is that? That is the hose for this machine. It's too short to be uh, to be any good to anyone, really. That is. It's just about long enough to. Let's just let's just get it off. I mean, okay, it's not stupidly short, but it's not very long, really, is it? That's not really going to reach reach up the stairs or do anything else. So it, it didn't come with a stair hose on; just come with a very very short hose like that. So you can see the issue that if you were if you were going to be uh, using it and you were tugging on the machine as it rocks backwards and forwards, you could hear it contacting the carpet because of those little pile adjustment wheels. So essentially, and the hose has got no swivel at either end, so as you're using it, it just gets kinked up. But I think that's a problem with a lot of upright cleaners' hoses, actually. Cylinders, they, they swivel, but these don't. Um, so the hose, basically, I found too short, but I think, obviously, they do say in Argos what the length of the hose is, so you do know, I suppose, before you buy it, but it's just not a very good hose. So, then we come on to the tool. Here it is. And the tool's not on the machine. I wonder why that might be. Because they don't supply anywhere to keep this tool on the machine. Now, other machines from the Vax range used to have a tool storage place just here, so that it used to fit and clip just in there. Now that's a better place than none at all. They could have put a tool storage clip here, but they didn't bother. Now, this here, this part, is for a stretch hose. If you bought a higher model in the range, it w I think it would have come with a longer hose. But they just sold the basic one, still with that, and it looks dreadful. It looks blooming awful, doesn't it? Having that on there, with a sharp pointy edge on the bottom. There's no long hose on this, so why bother having it on at all? You know what I mean? There was another, there was another clip on the back of here that I've actually taken off that was for the longer hose. I just removed it completely. But what's the point in putting it on when there's no long hose on the machine? So, you've got the... Um, this is the next issue. Right, this is the power cable. The power cable is, I mean, I think it's about a six, seven metre on this. It's not the longest one, but there, you're not going to get a very long cable with a very cheap machine. I mean, I accept that, that's granted. But this is the next issue. That, that comes out of the machine right down at the bottom, which is another one of my pet hates. Right? So, what, pe what uh, they would normally do on a machine where it comes out the bottom is to give you a cable clip somewhere on the handle. Where is it on this machine? There isn't one. There isn't, a, there isn't a cable clip on the top. So, but fortunately this has got a turbo brush. So what I did was I improvised and I wrapped it around the handle and put it through here. But some of these don't come with turbo brushes. So then you've got, effectively, there's no design of cable clip on the top to hold the cable clear. So that's the next, that's the next uh, basic design problem with it. Right. Now, the next problem, I mean they are, they are coming in thick and fast aren't they? This handle. This was the next problem for me. Because I'm 5 foot 11 tall, or um, what is that in centimetres, about 181 centimetres. That's how tall I am, 1.8 metres. This machine is stupidly short. I don't know whether I can compare it to... Yeah, it is shorter than that. But it is very, very short. And the way they put the handle... It's the way they put the handle on it that's causing the issue. Rather than mounting the handle on the back here, right, they put it on the front. And that effectively makes the handle shorter by putting it on the front like this. So, as I'm walking along with it, I'm having to stoop down because it's effectively making it too short, unless I hold the handle here, on the top, making it, it's not comfortable to do that. You've got to hold it there. So, effectively, the machine's not tall enough for me to use properly. Not only that, but it's pliable. It's too bendy. I mean, we, I used to say that Dysons were very pliable. But with, with the effort needed to, to move this machine along, I just found that when you were pushing it along, 
all that would happen is this handle would start bending. It's far too flexible as the whole machine is. The spine isn't strong enough. So it, it you know, it just doesn't feel at all well made at all. So I mean it's it's just absolutely rubbish. But the actual pickup, we're gonna put some mess down on the carpet and I'll show it picking up because the pickup on it isn't actually too bad. And that was the shame about it, because if it had been built better, had the handle on the back, or just a bit longer, this was a bit stronger. It had better pile adjustment wheels on it and more ground clearance. It had a decent hose. It had somewhere to clip your cable. Then it wouldn't have been a bad machine for the money. But, you know, as it is, it, it's just dreadful. The, um, the, the access to uh, get this off, right? Because this pet tool's on, you can't get to the button to unclip this. That's another design problem. That was at the design stage, because it's got straights on the bottom of this thing. You can't get your finger underneath to open the button. So every time you're empty, you've got to remove the, you've got to remove the turbo tool to get access to this button here. Again, another design fault. I think it was designed by chimpanzees, this machine, because it certainly wasn't designed by people with brains. They had to use the thing. So we'll take that off. The bin itself isn't too bad. I mean, this is basically uh, a bin that they've had from previous models that uses the, uh, the same design of separator. The filter, if I just put this down, sorry about that, filter's in the top here, right? And we can just simply pull the filter out. So, I mean, these, these aren't bad filters. They're not too bad. They wash quite easily. And it uses the same sort of cyclone design as appeared on previous models of Vax. So, I haven't really got too much of a problem with the actual canister itself. And it's got a reasonable filter in the bottom as well. That's the exhaust filter. So, it's got a rubber seal around it. It's got the, it's got the pleated filter inside. So, it's got a reasonable filtration system on there. But again, you can feel how cheap quality that plastic is. It really is cheap. So that's, that's put back in. I'll just put the top back on, on the canister. Put it back on the machine. Right, I'll sprinkle some dirt down and we'll see it working. So let's just put it on here. Right. So, I think it does push better now since I've filed down the back of the sole plate and I push it in certain directions across the carpet. It still struggles with uh, going against the pile though. I'll get the bag of filth. So there's Roger's word. Here's, here's the bag of filth, except I don't keep it in a bag, I keep it in a pot. So we can just put some of this down for it. likely to be rather noisy because the stone's gritting everything in here and this is only a 750 watt it's more powerful than the Dyson over there so we've got to just break all this fluff up here my goodness look at all this dust this is um, more like a big mess test this is really I might have to go over this carpet with another cleaner afterwards I don't know whether this is going to cope Okay, I'll just put this camera up on the top and I'll angle it down onto the carpet as I did with the previous test. Right, okay, let's go then.
there we go. So it took a little while for it to get that up, but it uh, appears to have got the worst of it up. How much it's left in the carpet, I'll, I'll not know. There are little bits left on the carpet here and there, so it's not got everything out. There's a fair bit of fine dust left in there. If I'd have got a little bit more time left on this video, I would have gone over it with the Dyson. But as it is, I've only got two minutes left before the camera cuts me off. But what's happened to it, basically, is it's clogged up by the looks of things. It has picked it up. It's got most of it into the bin. But in the top here, where the separator is, it has literally clogged the separator. And I will just open it up now and have a look. So we'll get the bin off. Take the pet tool off again. Get the bin off. I mean, that, that's, that's fairly heavy, that bin. So we'll take the lid off and the filter. Yeah, the filter, you can see there, there's a fair bit of dust come through, which isn't too bad though for one of these. And there you can see inside here. And then if we take the, uh, the top off, which I'll do now, what's basically happened is the uh, separator, the primary separator where the dirt comes in, is completely clogged. Now there's plenty of space left in the bin, but the separator itself wasn't able to handle that big mess test. And it, I, I knew it had lost suction, and I could hear the, the relief valve going off. So it wouldn't have picked up much more. I'm, just, I'm surprised it actually picked all that up, in all honesty. But there we go. That, that shows there that it can just about pick it up. It picks the grit up, but it doesn't get all the small particles out, because I can still see them all over the carpet. Okay. So, I'm afraid it's thumbs down for this machine. Thumbs down. Dreadful machine. I'll give this about... I mean, it was really struggling to pick those pieces of grit up. You can hear how long they were staying in the brush roll for before uh, it actually got sucked up. <laughs> you can actually still see them in the housing there as well. So, I'm going to give this machine as a, as a rating. I'm going to give it about um, a 3 out of 10. Because it is a dreadfully designed machine. It was cheap, but it's not really fit for much, much fit for purpose. So until next time, from me and this, I'll see you.